Hi, uh, Clara. Uh, can you just uh, tell me a uh, little bit or introduce me to the piece uh, which you've written, uh, which is called Contemplation Under You, and, it, and which was written and performed by a group of um, composers and musicians who has various disabilities? Yeah, so the idea was um, sort of, in, initially it had occurred to me long long before the the covid pandemic that one of the uh, barriers that disabled musicians often face is actually being in the same places as things are happening um they want people to come to london and just do a track and go home again um they want people to have very intense rehearsal schedules uh, because of room hire barriers and things like that and people who can't travel to do this are being left out and when everybody was kind of put into that same boat by the covid pandemic um I was able to get some Creative Scotland funding to investigate more about uh, people being able to do professional high level music um, in collaboration using MIDI signals, because I mean, I think most musicians kind of found out during the, 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 the big pandemic lockdowns that sending audio files and trying to collaborate with using audio files was was not working. It was not very good. Um, so yeah, we wanted to see what the possibilities were of this uh, piece with MIDI signals. And I was aware of a number of disabled composers and performers who had that travel barrier as, as part of their disability. And I wanted to include those people as part of the project. And how many, um, how many, how many musicians were, were involved? Um, so that would be five, five performers. Um, so we had, um, I played my iPad, um, Chris Halpin played Mimu Gloves, uh, Amber Skews played on a, a synthesizer, Sonia Allori played her part on an iwi, which is electronic wind instrument, and Matthew Finnemore uh, played his part on an acoustic violin that went into um, an audio to MIDI translator. So his part was possibly one of the most interesting because a lot of the time with my music, I am happy to embrace some of the, the technological glitches. So sometimes what was in the score and what he was playing didn't fully translate into the MIDI score. And it came out a bit different, but I, I, I quite enjoyed that. Yes, and there was like you said, right? Five musicians. Uh, do they have all the same uh, disability, or they have various disabilities? Um, yeah, probably a a, a, a fair range. Um, you know, I don't want to sort of speak to people's uh, specific disabilities because a lot of people are not very keen to define themselves in, in that way, you know, they're musicians, they're composers, they experience certain barriers to participation. Um, can and, you, you okay, know, I'm... Maybe, yes, I understand that you don't want to like mention them, but can you uh, mention the composers? But can you say some some barriers? What kind of this, what barriers the group have in general, right? Yeah, yeah, so, um, one of Matthew's inclusion barriers is financial um, and also uh, some of the, the interaction difficulties that you can have with people if the way that you understand things from people is a bit different from the norm. Uh, and, you know, if if you're somebody who's quite lively i mean matthew wouldn't wouldn't mind me saying he, it, that his disability is uh adhd so um he can be like quite he can find rehearsal situations quite difficult because they're very focused and concentrated and people don't want you to be moving about and jumping up and down and asking a lot of questions and mm -hmm. and going off on a tangent um so that that was 
we were trying to overcome for Matthew is to include him as he is. Um, and then Sonia, I know, has a travel barrier. Um, and, and she does have experienced this thing of, oh, it'd be great if you came down to London. And she's like, can't really do that. Um, and Amble and myself uh, both experience um, lo uh, load barriers, like uh, of um, how long people expect you to be able to do things for, and, you know, um, a stamina barrier that we can't work for several days in a row, we can't work for hours in a row, we need to, to keep having these breaks. And um, so doing this this way meant that we didn't have to worry about, you know, the cost of venue hire, which is usually what makes everything have to be so intense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, right, you said there is, uh, mm -hmm. In what way you overcome right this the disabilities and and then make together what was what was your approach towards that because as I understand five people with various disabilities somebody yeah. cannot be focused somebody cannot uh, be focused for a long time somebody cannot move uh, uh, somebody maybe not hearing enough right, right so 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 how to make it all work right what was your approach to making the piece? So uh, some of the things that we included along the way, um, we had a uh, live captioner who is a specialist in music captioning. So she will uh, describe the music for somebody to be able to, to help them to, to join in and play. Um, we, it, it was mostly about the, um, the rehearsal schedule and meeting people's needs in, in that schedule, rehearsing for maybe an hour or two hours at a time, and then having a break of weeks before we would rehearse again. Um, sometimes we had to be very accommodating of people not being able to come, even if they had committed to come um, and do rehearsals. You know, if it doesn't work out for you on that day, then then there's, there's no point in somebody turning up and just not being up to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, you said that you use some uh, some technologies as well. Can you just uh, can you just say some about what kind of technologies you used that can somehow empower their participation? Yeah. So the the idea was for people to be able to participate anywhere with an internet connection. And um, you don't even need a particularly good internet connection because you're only actually sending text. So what we had was um, a program called Time Warp Internet MIDI. Um, and there's other versions as well, like RTP MIDI, but it's a little bit more difficult for people to set up at home. So what we wanted was something that was fairly easy to just download and go um with nice easy user interface for it and um so we people were connected by this internet midi that that sends the midi signal the note start and stop data um over to the other player and the other player can actually choose to have those come out of their instrument at their end if they're playing a a, a midi in instrument and um, so you're actually playing each other's instruments in situ and you know you can accompany somebody on their piano um, there's a bit of latency but nowhere near the kind of problems that that you get with um trying to send audio data mm -hmm. right and um i understand you write uh, so you were a composer right so you write the scores or instructions So a combination of both. It was a fairly sort of complicated score um, in terms of, because um, we also had some little bits where people had done pre-recording and the recordings went into the track um, because we wanted that reliability if somebody wasn't able to do it on the day, which reasonably often happens working with uh, disabled players. And um, so, we had markings of when I wanted people to play specific notes or um, guidelines where I wanted people to to improvise within 
a structure and we had to be quite flexible to people's different timing needs uh, firstly because of the latency that was coming from the software but also because it can be quite demanding for somebody whose uh, movement is a little bit more complicated um, to say I want you to do this specifically on this downbeat and you must come in at this point and, and, and if you can't just make your hand do that on command you, you have to be more flexible with timing so it was quite uh, scored in a way that that didn't become a huge issue. Yes, and what's the difference, uh, maybe from your experience, when you create uh, scores for for such group who has disabilities and for musicians um, who had who has no disabilities, are there difference from composer? Yeah, I think so, because I tend to end up writing music more for a person who's going to play a part rather than an instrument who's going to play a part. So uh, when I'm writing for non-disabled players, and uh, I know that they're, well, ex extremely trained musicians, I tend to think in terms of that being a clarinet part, even if I know who's going to play it. Whereas when I'm composing for disabled musicians, I tend to have more in my head, this is a Rona part, this is an Emma part. This, uh, right. So it's it's more personalized. Yes, so so in this, I mean, uh, regarding this piece, regarding the piece contemplation and review, so you you create uh, these parts, right? Uh, because you have five musicians, uh, just thinking yeah. about who is playing as well, right? Adjusting, can you give some example? What adjustment it could be? Um, well, because Chris's instrument um, is sort of in in a way similar to mine, that the the instrument itself doesn't do anything unless you write the instructions. Um, so you have to tell the gloves what you would like them to do when you make certain movements. You program that all in. Um, so you know you're starting with a much more of a blank slate in in that sense and then also the fact that certain movements are going to be much more challenging for chris compared to somebody who is non-disabled so we had a long chat about um what suits your instrument what suits you as a player um and then i had my ideas about what i was hoping he was going to play but some of that was was not not going to work and it didn't make it into the score because there's no point making something you know that's that's just super challenging for somebody good and uh, uh, uh i understand you said that uh, there was some pre-recordings as well because you are not sure right when when there will be the date of premieres and anything could be played by uh, by all musicians do i correctly understand that these pre-recordings could be one way how to deal uh, in that situation as well. Um, yeah, so um, it, it did end up that that uh, one of the musicians, Sonia, was was not able to uh, make the performance. So uh, she was represented by a, a, a still photo and all of her recordings that she'd sent in went into the final gig. Good. Got it. And what was uh, your motivation to create this piece? Um, initially, it was a motivation to uh, check out the software and, and see what the software could do. Um, because I, I, I really wanted to be able to overcome this barrier. Because if you can't leave your home at all, then that's your number one barrier to participating in music no matter what instrument you play. Um, so we were looking at how we could include people from any location um, in, into music participation. And if it would work for something at a professional level, you know, it, it, it should work for beginners as well. And then the actual piece um, had started off as a completely different piece. And uh, we, we'd, we'd had a bit of a go at, at rehearsing and workshopping some of the bits. And it just, it 
it didn't really work for the technology. And what we ended up doing, I think it was just myself and Matthew that were on uh, for that session. And uh, we just said, well, what if we abandon the piece and trying to make us change to the piece, which is so often what you're asked to do as a musician is to bend yourself into what's already there. And uh, we said, what if we do what works and then that will become the piece? So we started doing some improvisation and from that improvisation that went into the score, um, we just went for this completely different piece that had been built from scratch. Got it. Got it. So it's one thing is this technology, right? Uh, you said MIDI in order to overcome what years. And, and then interesting thing was happening uh, is that you, you understand that not um, that musicians and technology and your pre-written piece before it doesn't work so you need to start from other way around like what these people can do with this technology right correctly yeah. yes yeah it's it's uh it's it's so much more personal and uh situation specific and i think that's that's where my whole it, inspiration comes from to com compose things because they are in that moment they are about that situation they are for those people and what was the message of this piece it was just really a, a, about you know, relaxing and stepping back and uh, doing what works rather than panicking and being being on the edge, you know, and that's why the title Contemplation and Review, we'd, we'd done all of these technological things to get to a certain point and it wasn't working. And so the importance of taking that step back and reflecting on what's not working and reflecting on what you're trying to achieve and whether the thing that you're doing is still going towards that achievement and just going no mm -hmm. and can you say how long is the piece and what kind of parts is in the piece mm, i think it's about four or five minutes I would have to check that um, and again because it's a kind of an a, there is improvised sections within the piece it's not necessarily the same um, length for each performance um, but yeah it's pro probably about that and what was the other bit sorry yeah. how long is the piece and uh, and do uh, is it one part or several parts or or are there some kind of internal structure or? Okay, or... Um, so in terms of parts, um, there are five uh, player lines and a backing track that is sort of the glue that holds everything together when people are coming in and out of, of different parts. And within the player parts, there are some, uh, some pre-recorded and some performed live. Uh, sections for each player. Mm -hmm. So I think the the idea was was to try to get everybody into combinations of of duets so that they all played together with with one other player, with with each other player. Got it. Got it. And the last question: What you have learned from this piece? What is your uh, free learnings? Mm. I think it's very much, um, I can't get the word that I want, it's right there, um, it's confirmed the idea for me that um, you need to start from the people um, to get the inspiration and not start with the score um, for groups of disabled musicians obviously we start with some structure we and I, I will bring certain pieces of music 
to you know to the table but generally now i leave a lot more of the scoring aspects of of composing um either until we're in rehearsal or sometimes you know i always want people's personalities as part of my performances anyway um so i will have a lot of uh semi-structured improvised sections that i i want that that person to give me something from but yeah i think definitely learning that the the music has to arise from your collaboration that you're doing um rather than the music created in isolation and then just just brought into the group good and what could be your um your suggestions to composers uh, uh, who would like to written uh for musicians with disabilities you need to have a really decent conversation with people about um what what works for them and what doesn't work for them uh, because each person is different each person's different in how they identify themselves disabled composer composer with disability you know it's a whole thing in Eng the english language um and you know to to try to make the most of the things that um that are representative of of somebody's disability if they if they want to do that if they're happy to do that um so for me sometimes when i'm writing for particular people who would find it difficult to play in rhythm i will absolutely throw the rhythm out of the window i want it to be so out of time that that you you really your your ear is drawn to that rather than trying to uh make the musician do the thing that is hard and and also you know all of those other aspects that are around it um where you want them to travel to and how long that's going to take how long you want them to rehearse and how long that's going to take and what it will take out of them to to do that it's often the music part is is easy um we we can write the music we perform the music that's what we do we're musicians but the difficulties tend to come in all of the other shapes and sizes thank you very much Claire. For, uh, for this interview. Thank you. Uh, I need to find the button that stops the recording. There it is.